Hey guys, so I just wanted to make another quick video here um, about how to cut climbing cord. And um, I've been doing this for a while. It kind of just takes practice, but I'm gonna talk to you about some of my preferences and show you ultimately what you wanna do with cutting cord. I know it's not exactly um, the most common thing for especially like single pitch or sport climbers to carry around cord with them. But uh, usually when you get into trad climbing, that's when you start pulling out cord, as well as uh, certain anchors like involving cord are becoming more prevalent in the sport climbing world. And I'm seeing more sport climbing clubs using cord in their anchors. And so a lot of times you can go to REI or uh, any sort of retail store and buy a certain length of cord and they'll cut it for you. And they'll have like a hot knife there, which, you know, it's just a sharp, piece of metal that can be heated up so that way it can cut the cord and burn it at the same time. But uh, also what you can get is like these packs of cord that are pre-cut uh, and sold at certain lengths. Like usually uh, 30 feet and 50 feet uh, seem to be the common one. And so usually um, when I teach classes like multi-pitch rock climbing and stuff like that, I or uh, glacier classes or crevasse rescue classes, uh, we have people bring cord. I personally like to have people have certain a uh, certain amount of cord with them. And usually I just show them how to cut it and burn it there um, because it's kind of like an acquired skill. But um, I figured I'd make a video about it so everyone can see it. And uh, what I usually do is um, I usually use a mixture of six and seven millimeter cord. Um, and you'll find that as you cut the cord, the bigger it is, the harder it is to sort of keep it together before you burn the end. And uh, I'll show you, share with you some tricks as to how to avoid the cord coming unraveled on you while you uh, are in between cutting it and burning the end. But generally what I recommend for people just starting to carry cord anchors with them, uh, especially if they're doing sport anchors, is you can go out and get a pack of 30 foot cord and just cut it straight in half and it'll become 15 feet pieces and then I'll give you two 15 foot segments of cord for two anchors and that's a good uh, start into the world of quad anchors and cord anchors in general as well as you can actually use those for some trad anchors that where the pieces may be closer together and um, when it comes to rock rescue stuff, it's nice to have a bit more, somewhere along 16 to 18 feet of cord. That's how much I usually bring with me uh, on the back of my harness just for rescue purposes, but um, something along those lines is nice. You want ultimately a good selection of cord, anywhere from six mil and seven mil cord for different applications. Six mil is good for uh, snow, travel, glacier, uh, crevasse rescue, that sort of stuff, and 7mm is kind of what you want more in the climbing world uh, because you have to worry about it being cut, so you want something a bit thicker. Alright, moving on to actually like cutting the cord, you need a knife and a lighter, and that's pretty much it. Uh, ultimately, with the, I do recommend for the knife, the lighter you can use any lighter, really. For the knife, I recommend a straight blade. If you get any blade that's serrated, even if it's only like half serrated around here, I find that that just sort of uh, frays the end of the cord a whole lot and makes it harder to keep the whole thing uh, together long enough to burn it. So a nice straight blade is really the best way you can go. Get your cord, you cut it, blade facing away from you. There you go, kind of gingerly. You can see how it's it's a little frayed right now, but ultimately the cord is still together. So usually what I do, just try to keep it together like that. Grab my lighter. Best to do this inside where there's no breeze. Yeah, I gotta actually switch this to inside. The, the wind is kind of making this hard. All right, so I'm inside now. And uh, I did have to, I scorched it a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. And you see, the ideal situation is you want the uh, the sheath to be melted around the core. 
and the core should be sort of glassy like that. If it's a little more black, like you burned it a little bit longer, that's no big deal. It's still going to work just fine. But that's how you keep it all from fraying apart and uh, staying together. Sometimes over time, you can get the sheath splitting away from the core, and then that's no big deal. You just reburn it, or if it starts to spread a whole lot, then you just cut off like that much and then reburn that end. That's no big deal. Here you can see how it started to fray a little bit more. Yeah, I even make it fray. You can sort of deal with that by just, again, pulling it all together. You lick your fingers a bit. And then you'll see how the flame actually kind of makes those sheath things. Yeah, they shrivel up in those little uh, ends of the sheath. Yeah, and you can actually work with that. Just make it hot enough, push it all together. Sometimes it's nice to just take it on the ground and then use like the butt of the lighter to just add pressure and roll it. I'm not gonna do it on this stuff, but you just add pressure and then roll it together after you've melted it and then they'll all melt back together. Just keep on exposing it. See right there, you can see it's a little more on the brown side. That's because a bunch of sheath collected right there and then got all uh, burnt. And then I held in the lighter for a while. <laughs> and there we have it. That's it's pretty good. Maybe mess around with it a little bit more. But uh, that's it's pretty well burnt. And now this won't come apart on you at all. So this right here is something that you want to avoid. And uh, it gets even... Sometimes it can get even worse than this if the sheath is like down here and the core is still sticking out. But you see how it's sort of mushrooming out. And uh, even if you do, you can burn this all together and uh, singe everything. But what will happen is over time it will just start to open up again. And then you have to reburn the end of your cord. When you burn it, you want it to sort of be the same diameter as the rest of the cord, or as close to the same diameter as the rest of the cord. And that's one thing that you gotta watch out for when you are using the hot blade to cut it, because a lot of times you will get it mushrooming out. And that's just, uh, it just won't let your cord last as long as if it were properly capped. Well, there you have it, guys. That's pretty much all there is to it, to cut cord. Uh, keep in mind that with the 7 and the 8 mil, if you want to cut any 8 mil cord, um, then you have to do, uh, you have to be very careful because the sheath will come unraveled really fast. And uh, really, I kind of only use the knife and the lighter method like this for a cord like 7 mil and below. Or 8 mil, oh, I don't really use 8 mil too much, but I use uh, 7 and 6 mil a lot, and so I'll use the knife with the lighter method. But if I try to cut anything like a rope, or, uh, you know, uh, because ropes are made with different materials. And so a lot of times I will actually use a hot blade for that. If you bring it to REI or a, a climbing gym, I'm sure they'll let you use it or someone at the gym will cut it for you. And so um, you can just go there if you don't have a hot blade or any retail store. I'm sure they'll allow you to at least cut it. Or if it's a policy that only they could do it, then they'll cut it for you. Um, but I just I try to cut everything myself. Uh, when it comes to cord, then I always, like this type of stuff, I always use the knife and the lighter method because that's just what I have and they're cheap and easy. And uh, I also cut a lot of cord. So it's kind of, uh, this like capping it off well just takes practice. And um, I hope that I sort of showed you my method in this video, uh, but overall you just gotta practice. So go out and get some cord and practice cutting it and capping it and making sure that doesn't come in freight on you. And uh, I'm sure the first couple times you do it, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get what you want and then take it out climbing and then see if it opens up and frays again. Because if it does, then you wanna change up your system because uh, these caps usually last as long as the cord does for me. And so that's how you know that you're doing it pretty well. If you have any other uh, methods that you use, I know some people like to put tape around like the center, like if they're cutting this part, they put tape here and then they cut it and then use the tape to hold the whole thing together and they burn the end. And I think that's really good for like rope uh, when you're cutting rope to help keep it together if you are using the knife and lighter method, uh, which I don't really do too much. Again, I just use the high blade. So 
I don't have too much experience with that, but the tape will help hold the rope together until you can burn the whole thing with a lighter. Uh, so I think that's a good idea. But um, if you have any other ways of cutting this cord, then feel free to leave a comment. If you have any more questions or any requests for other videos, you can put that in the comments too, and I'll see you guys in the next one.